21st Century Entrepreneurship with Martin Piskarik. Well, Martin, I'm uh, Joel Rickman, and, and yeah, I've been with uh, Equifax for a few years. We've grown the work number uh, almost fourfold over the last five years. And I would love to take credit that that's things that we're doing uh, marvelously, but I would also say that it's an equal demand in the industry as folks are working harder to provide better loans uh, to their customers, uh, as well as the change over the last few years of being more brick and mortar type of lending environments and much more of a digital environment where you don't get to meet the person firsthand. You're looking for more data now and sometimes alternative sources of data to really validate who that individual is. And that's where the work number and, and my success and, and our business's success have really been built on over the last few years. And how did you adapt to changes in the market? We were, in some cases, it felt like a startup, even though we were about 10 years old. Um, a few years ago because we still weren't really integrated into a lot of our clients. We were, people were still logging into a website and accessing data one at a time. And so starting five years ago, we really focused on how do we help customers get connected so they can get real time data from us. And where they can access that data uh, while somebody's fingers are on the keyboard or thumbs are on the phone applying for a line of credit or a credit card. And so we've spent a lot of time and energy with our customers, as well with a lot of the uh, platform providers out there to help ensure that our data is connected and easily accessible in real time uh, for our customers and ultimately their customers so that those loans can be approved in real time. Let me ask you, data is connected in real time. Do you have any sales story to support that storytelling? Sure. So what, what we've seen over the last few years with people being connected is as many lenders are competing for loans, um, we found it to be common, especially in the auto space, that when someone that doesn't necessarily have a full credit report or might be considered a subprime borrower uh, comes into a dealer and picks their car. When they go back to the financing office, uh, that financing professional will pull up a credit report. And if they don't meet a prime lender's um, requirements, they'll put that loan out to three or four lenders to bid on that loan. And we're seeing to where those lenders now, it used to be we might see one, now we're seeing all three or four of those lenders pulling employment and income information in real time. What that allows them to do is provide a better rate on the loan, and it allows them to provide that loan without other stipulations. So what we've seen is those companies growing and winning more of the loans as they use that data. And that's, you know, it's quickly learned in the industry. So if one does it and it's working for them, we've seen other lenders follow suit with that and have been very happy with that success of, of getting everyone connected. So Martin, one of the things that, that we've seen is there's a lot of startup companies or smaller companies in what, what's referred to as the fintech space. And we've had a lot of success working with all of them hand in hand because when you're in a fintech world and you've started, you can really differentiate yourself and look like a large organization and perform like a large organization with the right tools. Anybody that has a you know an 800 credit score in the United States is going to have people wanting to give them money. But where we're really seeing the fintechs come into play is they're finding those unique pockets of individuals that are looking for the opportunity to get credit and start to build their credit worthiness and their credit report. Um, but they haven't always had the easiest path of finding that. When using our data, we're finding a number of the platforms that are taking that credit report or credit score and some of that being lacking, 
um, or a low score, they're applying additional data. In our case, it might be the work number data that has income and employment data, but we've also seen them take data from other repositories at Equifax, such as um, utility data or and the payments and the consistent payment history there, or even taking alternative data such as buy now, pay later type of performance results. Using those multiple data streams into a platform, these startup organizations or smaller lenders can compete with the larger organizations because they can make decisions based on a larger profile of that individual consumer. You really start to get that full view of they may be a lower credit score, but they've got a really high income, and it's because they're a younger individual. They may only be 26 or 27, but they've got a very high income, and they just haven't borrowed a lot of money previously. As you pull those data pieces together, you now start seeing what a gem you have there and that somebody you want to be a customer and can empower that to happen. And I really see that where the fintechs are disrupting. They're finding the borrowers out there that want the opportunity to get mainstream lending products, but they haven't qualified through some of the traditional banking rules that have existed over the years. You know, one of the things that we talk a lot with uh, with the digital lenders and the fintechs of the world has to do with security and reliability. Um, it, it's interesting. One of the things that we've seen, as I, I mentioned earlier, we've worked really hard to get integrated with a number of our clients and platforms. Almost 25% of the transactions we see coming out of our platform happen after business hours or on weekends. And it's because that's when the consumers are free, that's when they are doing the loan applications, and that's when they're pulling it through. So we focus on having a 24 by seven available platform uh, that people can connect to. And then we've invested more than, than anyone, in the organ, anyone in the world in this uh, industry in regards to security and ensuring that uh, we are very buttoned up and, and uh, pass. And we've actually been uh, evaluated by a number of the security professional organizations out there and ranking um, as a leading organization in all industries in regards to security. We take it very serious as everything moves digital. There is so much information about every consumer and every individual out there that we want to ensure that we are making um, making everything as safe and protected as possible. Financial inclusion has become a very hot topic in, in many ways. And uh, in the United States, many of the large lenders, as well as internationally in many countries, many large lenders are looking for ways of how do we include more? How do we find these individuals that are credit worthy and we can help enable that and, and help enable their dreams? How do we help make that mortgage available? How do we help make that car loan available? Or, and sometimes it's even just that personal loan when they get out of school so that they have money to get started and they, as they get started in their career. And we believe that in, in many of those cases that I just talked about, a credit report by itself does not reflect well on the individual's entire capability of paying you back and what they can do. We, we know that based on income and employment, that is a significant um, indicator of someone's ability to pay you back. We also know that there's direct relationships between income amount enable ability to pay back, but also tenure. So even those folks that maybe are making less money, we have found that if they've had a stable job for four or five or six years, their payback ratios, even if they haven't had credit before, but start to become credit active, they perform as a very good near prime or even prime type borrower. It's that stability in their life and that responsibility carries over into their financial obligations as well. And so those different aspects have, uh, have become really key as lenders learn those uh, different correlations to help include more people and uh, help enable lending for autos and cars and personal loans uh, to a wider spread of the population.
One of the things that we enjoy is the opportunity of working closely and hand in hand with our clients. We have a number of sales reps and product specialists that will actually work with clients to map out what their current lending process and rules are and help them identify what the ROI would be to add alternative data sources uh, or specifically income and employment into that model and how it'll help them not only in some cases reduce risk, but also win more loans. And, and that's what's interesting about um, the alternative data space in general is I like to look at it not as to how am I reducing my risk, but more about how am I expanding my opportunity with, with customers. And so you do want to do that in a risk managed way, but it's really about expanding your customer base. And so our professionals will work with clients on a daily basis. And to me, there's nothing more rewarding than when we hear about, we worked with this client, we mapped out an ROI, we went into a proof of concept phase with them and we hit the ROI and exceeded it. That means that everything's working. It means we understood the client's business, the, un the client understood what we were communicating to them. And together we made a meaningful impact into their business and now have a new partnership for growth. And that's a really exciting result for me when we work together with clients at that aspect. It's been a really fun ride. We've continued to grow and, you know, we look back over the, the last few years and and our data is being used in over 63% of all the mortgages that are, are being written here in the United States. Uh, last year alone, we helped over 4 million subprime auto buyers get financed um, and getting their car on an annual basis. We helped tens of millions of people get credit line increases on credit cards or get new credit cards approved to them. And I, you know, last year, I believe it was a little over two and a half million personal loans or granted using our data to help uh, help get that transaction done. So that's where we take a lot of excitement. And it's not just that space, our data is also used when someone goes to look for a new job and they're validating their previous places of employment and they're in the background screening. And then in the United States, we help uh, the government uh, award um, social security benefits and those type of benefits to citizens faster because they have access to the data to understand that person's individual needs uh, or, or needs for help in that case. So we take a lot of pride in helping people get things done and using our data uh, to empower that to get done quicker. And, you know, if, if you want to learn more about us, uh, you can come to, to either Equifax.com or the work number as one word.com. Uh, we'd love to, to talk to you, educate you a little bit more about it. Uh, not only are we in the United States, we are expanding out. We now have exchanges um, in the UK, Canada, and Australia, um, and continuing to look uh, where we can we can grow and expand throughout the uh, throughout the world. If anybody takes anything away from this session, I, I really hope it's the concept of experimenting with different decision processes. There are so many borrowers out there that in today's world, no two people are the same. Um, everybody comes up with different life experiences. Everybody has access to different education or resources or whatever. But what really comes down to the heart of lending is do I believe this person has the ability to pay me back? And do I believe they're willing to pay me back? That's what it really comes down to. And there's a lot of uh, sources out there that can help you get there. Of course, there's the credit score and it's a wonderful predictor of, of future payment. If you don't have that, or if it's lacking in, in regards to trade lines and stuff, go out and look for utility data and, and what does that say about their payment history or rent data and what does that say about their um, their payment history and of course their income. If they have a large income and they're sharing with you what their expenses are, you can quickly calculate their ability to pay you back and work with them, even in a fully digital world. Um, some of the lenders out there today have taken that opportunity to, even in a self-service, fully digital world, they help that consumer 
calculate how much can I afford to borrow and what's it going to mean for me. And then they work with that consumer interactively throughout the month to make sure they're making the payment and to make sure that they're staying on top of, of their responsibilities. That whole ecosystem working together is what really excites me. And I hope people will take away from this that if, if you're only using a few data sources or you're only using a single model in your approach to lending, get out there and experiment with some of the other data out there. Experiment with what it can do to help you expand your customer base and to help you find those diamonds in the roughs that, that can end up, end up being great customers for you. 21st Century Entrepreneurship with Martin Piskorik.